the arthropods, the megabugs. As the battle lines were drawn in the war for world domination, the bugs were well ahead. At this time, there was one group who hadn't even entered the battlefield, the mollusks. The snails are nowhere. In the Burgess Shale, they look like this, a bunch of barnacles that hardly anyone could be bothered to eat. And where were we? We were well behind the bugs and in serious danger of extinction. In a world filled with giant predators, Pekaya was the perfect prey. Fossils of Pekaya are extremely rare in the Burgess Shale, less than a tenth of one percent of the total, a dangerously low presence. It is possible for an entire species to be hunted to extinction. You only have to think of the dodo. At the very least, it could point to Pekaya being on the endangered list. How did he avoid being eaten into extinction? Dez's colleague Jean-Bernard Caron believes that what he lacked in physical strength, he may have made up for with strategy. Pekaya qui n'a pas de, uh, de défense uh... Pikaya has no physical defenses. He has no hard shell, no spines like most of the animals in the Burgess Shale. But he may have developed a survival strategy. This strategy involved burying himself in the mud, but keeping a lookout. I think in this way he could have avoided being spotted by any of the giant predators. This might have kept him from the attentions of Anomalocaris, who mainly hunted above the sea floor. Yet Anomalocaris was not the only beast in the sea. He was part of a megabug menagerie called the Dinocarids. Like the dinosaurs, these monsters had a lot of successful variations on the killing theme. And there may even have been a dinocarid capable of digging up every pacaya hiding in the sea floor. Des Collins and his assistant, Kevin Goslin, are taking a trip to a remote plateau high in the Rockies in search of this elusive predator. So far, they have found only jaws and claws, no complete body. But the evidence points to a monster as big as Anomalocaris and with a definite taste for the lowlife. If something was going to find Pekaya in his hiding place, the fossil suggests this mysterious predator could have done it. We've been here on, on previous trips, and on that we found these claws and the jaws of a new dinocarid. We, uh, we know it's new because the, the claws them themselves have these long, thin uh, spines running from them. So their understanding of this is that these would work together. And the only reason I can see for something like that is that they use them to rake through, this, through the mud on the bottom. So I would say this animal uh, was probably feeding on soft-bodied forms rather than feeding on something with a hard exoskeleton on it. Rather than chase other hard-cased megabugs, this guy specifically went after softer targets in the seabed, like buried Pekaias. The lack of Pekaia in the fossils might be explained by some of them being in the guts of this new predator. When they find a complete specimen, there may be traces in its stomach that will confirm this one way or the other. The fact that we are here means that Pekaya must have hung on somehow, and they have unearthed extraordinary evidence that could suggest how it did this, by being remarkably resourceful. These are the fossilized babies of the megabug Leoncoilia. It's thought that to avoid being eaten by predators, or even by their own parents, the babies would migrate away from the main community to grow up in a nursery 
a safe haven that Bakaya could exploit. Here, Bakaya fossils were found in the greatest numbers. When Jean Bernard compared the rock bearing these fossils to those of Bakaya, they were a perfect match. It seems the fossils we found in the Burgess show that Pikaia was more common in areas where we don't find the big predators. One theory is that Pikaia was able to hide himself away in these groups of baby arthropods. It was perhaps a more subtle form of self-preservation. Pikaia could certainly live a protected existence here. And it may have been very successful because we do find lots of Pikaia in these nurseries. Somehow, Pikaia was able to hang on long enough to evolve further. But buried in mud or hiding with babies, he was a fugitive in his own world. Miles behind the leaders in the arms race. Who would ever have thought Pakaya was going to become the dominant group later on, including in the, the vertebrates? And of course, there's there's, there's no no chance at all. If you were if you were a dinocarid in the Cambrian, you you had it all, you know, and would presume that you were going to have it forever, right? And no reason to think otherwise. You were much better than anything came before, and there's nothing around at present which which can compete with you. This was the world of the Dinocarids, when the arthropods ruled the seas in a 30 million year reign of terror. Meanwhile, the vertebrates were barely hanging on by the skin of the teeth they didn't even have yet. The future really looks quite bleak for the vertebrates. You would probably anticipate that this was going to be an arthropod dominated world. By the end of the Cambrian era, 490 million years ago, Pakaya was extinct, but he'd done his job and passed on his genes to his descendants. But would they evolve fast enough to stay in the race? In order to be able to compete with the arthropods, with the vertebrates, they're going to have to fight back. They're going to need adaptations like teeth, claws, ways of catching other organisms more effectively. They're going to need to get larger that's exactly what happens. The arms race goes nuclear. Though our ancestors were on the run and the threat of extinction was just around the corner, sooner or later, they were destined to fight back. And the reign of the bugs would eventually give way. But it wasn't our family, the vertebrates, who next rose to power. There was a new terror lurking in the seas. The age of the super snails was about to begin. Having narrowly avoided annihilation at the hands of the megabugs, it was the turn of the super snails to put us under sentence of death. The second great battle would prove to be the toughest fight of our evolutionary lives. The new campaign began 440 million years ago. The evidence for it is buried here in South Africa, in a 